What's up school-based SLPs? If you're getting ready to go back for a new school year or you've already started your school year, I've got some tips and tricks to make this transition from summer break to a new school year as smooth as possible. Also, some things to help you set your school year up for success. As always, there's helpful links and resources in the caption below, so be sure to check those out when you're done watching. Three days ago, I started my new school year and I have to be honest with you, I'm feeling overwhelmed. And if you're in the same boat, I want you to know one, you're not alone. But I've done this multiple times and I know there are surefire ways to make sure that we set our school years up for success and ease into the school year as well with giving ourselves lots of grace and time to readjust. I'm starting out in kind of a new place. My job got shifted a little bit, and so instead of being at one site with the same teachers to work with every day, I'll be ping-ponging around and servicing students at two different sites. So my goal is to be as supportive as I can, but also to make sure I am maintaining my life-work balance that works for me so I can pour into my students. My first tip for you as you go into a new school year is to think about your intentions. What do you want to accomplish this year as a speech language pathologist? What do you want to accomplish this year as a human? There are always things we can be working towards. Plus, we know our field is ever changing. Maybe you have a lot of students with specific needs on your caseload this year. So what ways can you learn new skills and better hone your current skills in order to best serve them? What things do you want to know as a speech pathologist? Again, there's always new things to learn. What is something that resonates with you that will help you meet maybe some long-term goals? So set those goals, reflect on them every week, and be intentional with how you're spending your time, both as a human and as a speech language pathologist. My next tip is Reflect on why you're excited. I know there can be a lot of dread and overwhelm that go into a new school year. I remember feeling that way as a kid too, but there were always reasons to be excited as a kid, right? That's the same for us. There are reasons to be excited. I would challenge you every week of the school year to reflect every Sunday, maybe every Sunday night, reflect on reasons why you're excited going into a new week. I know for me right now, I'm going into the first week of actually having students on our campus. I'm so excited to see them, I can't wait. It might be a little bit overwhelming that I'm splitting two sites, but that's two whole groups of students I get to work with and it gives me a variety. It also gives me a little bit of nuance throughout my week. So I am excited for those kinds of things. Also, it could mean quick Starbucks runs in the middle of the day. I have new staff I get to work with and learn from. So there's always gonna be reasons to be excited and you can allow yourself to really sit in that excitement. Let yourself feel the butterflies in your stomach. If you feel that overwhelm and dread, another thing that you can do to really give yourself a solid foundation and a solid point of reflection is to focus on your why. Why are you here? Why did you decide to continue working in the schools? Why did you decide to start your clinical fellowship in the schools? What do you wanna contribute as a speech pathologist for your students? What do you wanna contribute in those therapy sessions? What do you wanna contribute as a colleague? You know, when you collaborate with your staff members. So think about your why. What is your purpose in your perspective in this space? A fun one. Well, they're all fun, but you know what I mean. Set up your room. What space are you going to be providing services in? What space are you going to be writing reports in and assessing in? Curate your space. Make your environment you. Somewhere you will enjoy bringing your students in that is fun, that helps everybody thrive. What is the space that you want to be focused in? And really enjoy the process of setting that up. I'm the type of person, I cannot focus on anything else until my room is set up. So the last three days, I was focusing on maybe changing around some furniture, bringing the newness into my room, getting some new posters, whatever it is, right? But allow yourself that fun and that time to set your environment up. It's so important that we have a space that we truly love to work in. And if you'd like some ideas, I did link an Amazon list where you can check out some of the decorations that I've looked at or that maybe I'm using to help inspire you, to help that speech pathology, service room, interior decorator vibe. Something you're gonna wanna do to set up your year for success that is very, very important. Start setting boundaries and start advocating for yourself. This week I relearned 
the importance of advocating, especially when you are splitting school sites, because I have two sets of admin that I am working with now. I have already been left off of some emails for meeting plannings and scheduling things, and it's been a little bit stressful. It's nobody's fault. It is hard when you have multiple speech pathologists on a site or you have someone who is bouncing around like a ping pong ball. So it's really important that from the get go, you are advocating for yourselves because I didn't do that last week. So I'm reminding you to do that and to start setting that communication up now. If there are places where you need to set boundaries, don't be afraid to do them. If there are reasons why you need to say no to things from the get go, so that way you are not only protecting your energy, but you are setting the boundaries around the scope of what you actually do in your job. Maybe it's based on your contract hours. Maybe it's based on what's listed in your contract as the school SLP. Make sure you're setting those boundaries and you are advocating because not everybody knows exactly what's in our job description. So we have to be willing to share that and we have to be willing to say no because of this. Be a team player, yes, always, but don't do it at the expense of your own mental health. Last but not least, and arguably one of the most important things that I want you to take into a new school year, ask questions. This is for the new SLPs and the more seasoned SLPs. Things change, new things are brought in, new procedures, all this stuff. Even if you've been working in a district for 15 years and somebody brings something up that you're unaware of or that you have no idea what they're talking about, ask them. Ask, ask, ask. I've been in my district for a little while now and I feel like I've grown more confident in asking questions. And instead of asking more questions my first year, I probably ask more questions now in my sixth year because I have learned how powerful and helpful it is when we do ask. You ask for support, you ask when you need help, you ask when you don't understand. It just helps us learn and be better clinicians. I want you to remember that when you do feel overwhelmed, when you do start to dread, it is okay. It doesn't make you a bad SLP. It doesn't mean you don't belong in the job that you're doing, but it is a time to sit and reflect. Allow yourself to ask yourself, why am I feeling dread? Why am I feeling overwhelmed? And see when you do then think about the reasons you're excited, when you reflect on your why, when you think about your goals as a speech pathologist or as a person, see if the dread and the overwhelm are, can be kind of pieced in there. And if you know, you're overwhelmed about one thing, well maybe you know, some, one of your goals, one of the skills you're working on will help with that overwhelm. Maybe it's a matter of you managing your time differently. If you're feeling that dread, well, is it because you have some unanswered questions and you should be asking for help? Is it because you are just nervous because you want to do well? And so now maybe let's think of all the reasons why we're excited and really reflect on those things. Be sure to click my link down below for your mindfulness calendars. Get yourself set up with some daily mindfulness reminders and tips and things to do that you can start in August and be on the lookout for the rest of the school year for those monthly mindfulness calendars. Also, I want to thank all of you educators and school SLPs and service providers for all you're doing. And I want to celebrate the school year with you. So if you use the code back to school, it's linked below and the code you can just copy and paste. All journals will be 15% off now through the end of August to welcome you back to a school year and say, I am so proud of you. I am wishing you all the best. Let's make it a good one.